Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm sorry for being late. I am here at 5.11 and we usually start at 10 past five after I give people some time to come on. I have been having a really busy day and I am exhausted and tired. So I am sorry for logging on a bit late. Um, yeah, life is busy. Um, so let me know if you all are there. I see we have a couple people on already. So I'll just wait for more people to log on and then we'll get on to business. So how are you all doing today? Right. So I'm not too sure if Nasanya is here. Nasanya, I am live. He was asking if I am on yet. I am on now. Sorry, I couldn't come on a bit earlier. I was trying to get home before five, but you all traffic. So I now got home. So good afternoon. How are y'all doing? How are the studies coming along? I know tomorrow, most people have an exam tomorrow. I think it's English literature. So everybody should have exams tomorrow, right? What I would do, I'm going to start off looking at the Caribbean because so many of you all have been asking me about the Caribbean, but Hi, Gasha. Good evening. The Caribbean is supposed to be y'all straightforward. There's not much that I can teach with respect to the Caribbean, but you have to know how to locate where the islands are. And one question that they like to bring is to draw a Caribbean island and identify an area where the resources are found. Hi, Nisanya. Right? So that is one question you should look out for with the Caribbean. And well, the other thing is knowing the location of the countries. So what I will do, I will pull up one of the sites that I usually use to learn, use with my students to teach the Caribbean. Right? And we we'll just go through some key things so that it answers the questions for a couple of people who was asking me about the Caribbean countries. So, so are you all seeing that map of the Caribbean? Can you all see the map of the Caribbean on your end? All right, so let us go through the map of the Caribbean. So with regards to the Caribbean, one way of remembering the location of the islands, of course, is to remember the major groupings. So what are the major groupings? You have the Lesser Antilles Island Arc, and this is sometimes called the volcanic island arc because of course, most of the countries on, in the Lesser Antilles, they have volcanoes on them. So it is the Lesser Antilles volcanic island arc. And that is of course, it begins from Grenada all the way up to Anguilla. 
right? When we get to the bigger islands, well, Anguilla, British Virgin Islands, and the US Virgin Islands, the Greater Antilles then begins, you have Puerto Rico, and those are the larger countries, and they are usually comprised of limestone. So they are more limestone in nature, those countries. They don't have volcanoes like the Lesser Antilles, right? And they are heavily comprised of limestone rock. So we call that the limestone countries, right? And then, of course, you have the volcanic island arc, the Lesser Antilles. The Lesser Antilles is split into what two groupings? So we know the two groupings. What are the two groupings for the Lesser Antilles? Good evening, Wes. So how are you all doing? What are the Lesser Antilles split into? What are the two groups that the Lesser Antilles are split into that you need to know or what that will help you identify the countries in the Caribbean? Listen, you're saying, um, right? By now, you all should just learn it off. There's nothing else I can tell you, but you just have to learn it off, right? So what else is it split in? I know there are other people there. Anybody know? The Lassa Antilles is divided into two other groupings. What are they? So I'm going to drop some links of the Caribbean, other links that you all can... can use to study the Caribbean quickly. No, not the Eastern. Very good, Alyssa, the Windward Islands and the Leeward Islands, right? So what is the Windward, where does the Windward Island begin and where does the Leeward Islands begin? So what, from which country does the Windward Island begin at and then the Leeward Islands? Let me know. So should I play some um, music, like you know those music they have on on the game shows? -na 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 -na. So good, right? So from Guadalupe, Martinique or Guadalupe? 
So it, it begins from the Virgin Islands and ends at Guadeloupe. Very good. And then, so the main marker is Dominica, right? So Dominica from Dominica beyond, those are the Windward Islands. So the Windward Islands are to the South Yol, and the Leeward Islands are to the North, right? So the Windward Island is to the South, and the Leeward Islands uh, to the south. So I think, Nasanya, you have that mix up. Right? So the Windward Island is to the south, and the Leeward Island is to the north. So if you look in the description box, right, I put a link there that you can use to get to the countries of the Caribbean, use to help you study the countries of the Caribbean, right? So the Windward Islands begin, right? They are the islands to the south of the Lesser Antilles Island arc, and it starts from Grenada. From Grenada, you move to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Then you have St. Lucia. Then you have Dominica, Martinique, and then Dominica, right? So remember that distinction. You also have the Leeward Islands, which are to the north. So you have the South Islands of the Les Antilles, which are the Windward Islands. And then you have the North Islands, right from Guadeloupe, Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, St. Martin, Anguilla, St. Kitts and Nevis, the US Virgin Islands they are to the leeward islands we also have some tiny islands that we consider leeward islands but they are closer to south america and they are what we call the abc islands or the nether antilles do you all remember the abc islands what are the definitions for the abc islands what is the those islands called a, B, C islands are who? What are the names of the A, B, C islands? Right, so Nisanya, don't mix up that. The Windward Islands are to the south and the Leeward Islands are to the north, right? Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao. Very good, Alyssa. So Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao is also part of the Leeward Islands and they are closer to the South American continent, just like Trinidad. So you notice that you have those islands on the island arc and then you have some islands that are off the island arc. So like Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados, we are not on that volcanic island. Uh, one, Trinidad is very close to South America. And the theory of plate tectonics, right, believe that Trinidad was once part of the South American continent. And that is why our flora and fauna matches that of South America. So, right, we are not a part of that volcanic island arc or chain or archipelago, right? So Trinidad, in terms of flora and fauna, is quite different from all the other Caribbean islands. You also have Barbados, which is also off the arc and to the side, 
right at the side of the La Santeles volcanic arc. And they are also heavily composed of limestone rock. Everybody following me so far? Are you all understanding the location of the islands and how to get a better idea of how to remember them? So you break them up by the regions. The Great Antilles are the larger islands. Stems from the Virgin Islands all the way to Cuba, right? Then you have the Leeward, the Las Antilles Islands that comprise the Leeward Islands to the north. And then to the south, you have the Windward Islands. So the marker is Dominica. So from Dominica, go down, right? Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Grenada. And they are what we call the Windward Islands. And then to the top, you have Guadeloupe, Montserrat, Antigua, and Barbuda, St. Martin, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, the British and US Virgin Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao. If you group them together, they are called the Netherlands Antilles. They are also a part of the Leeward Islands. And then you have the Bahamas Islands um, that we also sometimes group separately. And the Bahamas Islands are right above Cuba, north of Cuba, or let us say northeast of Cuba, right? The Bahamas Islands. And they are also heavily comprised of limestone, right? You also have Turks and Caicos right there with them as well. So the Lesser Antilles, right? You really just have to learn it off. There's not much that, you know, I can really teach you in terms of, of learning it. Also, you have to know at least, I would say, learn your country's shape and to be able to identify a resource or where the where the resources are found on the map because that is definitely one of the questions that they ask you all the time so remember that and also learn one other island so maybe you can learn um to draw jamaica or you can learn to draw barbados or guyana right so that you can identify forestry or belize you can identify fishing resources or um jamaica bauxite and so forth good afternoon italia nice to have you all on hi everyone and thanks for joining us so we just did a snapshot of the caribbean because as i was telling you all at this stage you'll just need to take one night or a couple hours and just go to the game and just test your knowledge of it and then learn to draw two of the, the the islands is that cool can i move on from that now because um a couple of people commented and asked me to go through the caribbean right so i like to really go through what you all asked me you know comment for me to go through so the other thing, right, we stopped that industry last class. And you're supposed to look at food processing for the secondary industry. So we can go through food processing and then I have a compilation of all the broad topic, past paper questions, right? That I want us to go through those questions um, tomorrow and Wednesday before your exams. So let us see how much we can get through today. So let us go to now the Singapore case study um, versus the Caribbean. Industries in the Caribbean is on the example, right? So thank you, Nasanya. Yes, you are like and share, right? So industries in the Caribbean is on the broad topics. So the industries that we went through so far in terms of forestry, the fishing industry, oil and gas industry, and the other one was bauxite that we did so far. Those were primary, and remember I said mining, 
and in terms of oil extraction can also be placed in secondary right but you have to be careful how you when they ask you the question where it falls under so for secondary industry the one that they what they really wanted us to look at is the food processing industry so what do you all know about the food processing industry and we look at the caribbean case study food processing in the caribbean i'm going to do the trinidad case study what do you all know you all started looking at that case study tell me what do you know about the manufacturing industry and then you have to compare it either with well you have to compare it with singapore right so i'm doing the food processing industry i'm not looking at the clothing Okay, so for y'all don't know, for, for y'all who, who are not familiar with the country of Trinidad and Tobago, if you are not from Trinidad, this is what Trinidad and Tobago looks like, right? Oh, I am not sharing the screen, sorry. So this is what Trinidad and Tobago looks like, right? We are one country, two islands, right? So we are lucky because we have a little island that we can always go to vacation on you know because we don't have nice blue beaches in trinidad like barbados and jamaica and grenada and all the other exotic islands right but we have tobago which is equally exotic and beautiful right so this is trinidad and tobago you have to remember learn how to draw the island you have to know to pinpoint of course an industry so that is why we're saying try to learn at least two islands right so trinidad and tobago so we are the southernmost southernmost island in the archipelago and we are right off the northeastern coast of venezuela that is why it's so easy for migrants from Venezuela to come to Trinidad because we are very close to the South American continent, right? We have a total land area of 4,768 square kilometers and it is the fifth largest country in the Caribbean. We have a population of approximately 1.3, oops, what did I do? Oh my gosh, sorry. Are you all seeing it? I think I, I cut it off by mistake just now. So we have a population of 1.3 million people. I am not too sure if that is our current population with all the migrants issues that we have been having we probably closer to 1.4 million right now right and the gdp per capita is approximately 17,000 us us right um trinidad and tobago main economic resource of course is oil and natural gas so this is some little facts that you all probably should know right and you would see here Food processing is one of the largest manufacturing sector in Trinidad, right? It contributes to more than 50% of the manufacturing outputs and accounts for 3% of the total GDP. So when we're looking at this case study, right? And we are comparing this with Singapore, right? what is interesting is that singapore is way smaller than trinidad and tobago and we have their their population is approximately 5 million 
So it is at least five times our population in Trinidad and Tobago. Right? They also do food processing in Singapore. Right? And their size is way smaller than Trinidad and Tobago. So it just shows you how population density works. So Singapore population density would be very high or higher than Trinidad and Tobago. And they have a lot of high rise buildings and they also can, they also focus on the food processing industry. So food processing industry, right, in Trinidad and Tobago, we manufacture a lot of our, our food, right? But we also import as well. I don't know if you all notice like other Caribbean islands, when you travel or if you have been to another Caribbean island, you would often see Trinidad um, products in other countries. So I'm sure Nassania or um, Italia, who's probably in Jamaica, you all would have come across some manufactured products in Trinidad. Like, you know, some of these snacks like sunshine snacks. Um, you have some of these things like matooks and Mabel um, products on the shelf. And likewise, we also see Jamaica products in Trinidad. We have Grace. Anybody ever came across Grace before? What other products you all know that we manufacture in Trinidad? So I called some before. Drop any comments. What are some of the other goods that you all know that we manufacture in Trinidad? What are some of the goods that we manufacture here? What are some of the goods? Remember, I like our session to be interactive. The more you interact, right, the more you remember. So I told you all just now about holiday snacks. Oh, very good, Danny. Angostura. And Angostura, um, some of Angostura products is known worldwide. So we just had a big fiasco. Anybody ever heard, y'all heard about what happened recently? What happened recently? I don't know if you're on Twitter, on, on Twitter and Twitter spaces. Um, that is like the new social media happening space, right? And it gives you a lot of current information. So what happened with... Um, this incident and there was also angostura soap Danica, what type of soap you're talking about you have to give me a brand right so we know angostura right but what very good to kill juve rum so what about juve rum what happened so michael b jordan right you all know him right he decided that he is going to take the word juve and brand his rum and he wanted to trademark it so if you trademark something it gives you legal rights right in terms of branding so like certain companies um in terms of like oh gosh this one you like to have this coffee place, Starbucks, right? Starbucks is trademarked. Many other companies, they would trademark their products. And if it's trademarked, it means that you cannot use um, that particular word or colors or whatever it is that they are trade trademarking, marketing certain privileges. So he decided that, you know, um, I guess he experienced carnival. And he wanted to use the word Juve to brand his products, right? And he has this little box. And in that box, you see one of the most famous things that we use in all drinks that is produced by Angostura. Anybody know what is that famous thing that we use in our drinks when we mix in cocktails 
or you mix in like um what we call pancha cream. I don't know if you all know what is pancha cream for those Jamaicans, but it's like milky drink with alcohol and eggs, right? Um, and we drink it around Christmas time, and we put this. In. So what is that um? What is that product called? That famous product that we put. That famous product that we put is called what? Bitters, Angostura bitters, very well. So we, um, Trinidad and Tobago, one of the products that is marketed around the world is right, Angostura bitters. It's all over. Even if you go to Amazon, you would find it. Even some of our curry, like chief curries and all of these things, you would find it, right? Um, right on Amazon. So that was the big controversy and voice in their concern. So that is just to show you all in terms of the, in terms of manufacturing products, Trinidad, we manufacture quite a lot. Jamaica as well, they have their whole Grace line of products and you often see Grace in Trinidad and Tobago as well, right? So with respect to the manufacturing um, sector, right? 3% contributes to GDP. So only 3%, it's not a large portion, like of course, oil and natural gas. And in Trinidad and Tobago, in terms of employment, food processing employs at least 13,000 people and you have at least over 500 businesses. So I like this information is old. And of course, now I am sure we have more um, small businesses and of course manufacturing employs a lot of people people like in national food processing national flour mills people who work at kiss people who work at nestle people who work in angostura all of these companies right so it provides jobs right to at least thirteen thousand people a lot of the companies that we have in terms of manufacturing ranges from large size companies or multinationals like Nestle to small family run businesses. Anybody can think of any small manufacturing um, businesses that, that we have in Trinidad. Small manufacturing businesses, anybody? So in terms of small manufacturing business, so you might have someone who has like a, um, would produce like pepper sauce. Do you all know Bertie's? Anybody know Bertie's pepper sauce? You all ever heard of Bertie's pepper sauce? You all know Bertie's pepper sauce? right Bertie's is, is well known as well for their pepper sauce and that is a small business it was an older lady that started this pepper sauce at in her home like in her living room and you know i heard her story where she just wanted to sell a couple pepper sauce and of course she blew up and now her pepper sauce is on the market nasanya you heard about Bert, Bert, Bertie's pepper sauce well that is quite good to know right so her pepper sauce um has also gained a lot of traction so in terms of the manufacturing industry we have um poultry so we have arawak you all know arawak who deals with chicken and um, we also have another company as well outside of arawak that does poultry seafood fruits vegetable confectionery so everybody know about the confectionery because you know of all um the nestle and um sunshine snack holiday snacks all of these people these people right pasta so we know about swiss right which is also a local brand in terms of location right this is now where we're going to the factors affecting the location of the industry so most of the factories are located in large cities so that they are close to the market or or they are also in towns where they 
they have access to markets also close to highways right a lot of our industries in trinidad is close to the highway so if you ever look at where nestle is ramsaran was also a very small um yes small family business run yes takia and they produce the peanut punch and juices i think it's most known for the peanut punch right so the raw materials right i sorry i was talking about location they are located in towns and cities close to markets where they can sell their produce or their products i should say and also they are also you find them near to the roads or to the highways so like national flour mills nestle is on the east west corridor kiss bacon factories on the um going to south right so they also tend to locate in industrial parks in trinidad and the raw materials a lot of it comes from comes locally and it is also semi semi-processed right and it comes from two sources either you get it locally right from local producers in terms of like things like cocoa rice sugar fisheries but we also import semi-processed materials for finished goods from the US and Canada. So we have both raw materials, we utilize the raw materials and semi-processed. So we have the local, the local outputs that we use in terms of raw material. And we also import um, semi-processed materials to use for the finished good, especially in like you know, um, certain types of um, industry. So let us say like Nestle, you know, they would, imp because Nestle is a multinational corporation or a multinational company. So they're gonna source a lot of their raw materials cheaper and bring it here, right? Coca-Cola, right? And then of course the labor supply, it involves both skills and semi-skilled workers. We, we already went through this by saying that it employs over 13,000 people, right? In terms of accessibility, I was just speaking about this in terms of roads. Roads are very important for transporting your markets, your produce, sorry, to the market, right? Your finished products to the market. And also to get your raw materials to the processing or manufacturing plant to make that product. In terms of technology, right, we utilize um, simple technology and you also have some um, high pressure and temperature in terms of refrigeration for meat and dairy um, that would require storage. So with the manufacturing industry, especially food, one of the important thing is storage of food because remember, food need to be certain meat and dairy need to be at a certain temperature so that it doesn't spoil everybody following me so far am i going too fast yes nathaniel highways because it makes transport easier and faster excellent am i going too fast oh you're all are understanding me right um in terms of government so government plays an important role again in terms of importing the semi-processed raw materials so they also allow for duty-free entry of certain materials and equipment for certain um small businesses so as a small business owner not just in the food industry this is good information for you all to know if you want to get into business after, right? When you finish school, there are like grants and certain um, subsidies for importing um, certain equipment and material, of course, once it is of beneficial to the country, right? Um, they also impose high taxes on some imported food that complete directly with the locally produced food. 
So one of the things that the government have done in Trinidad and Tobago, especially um, in recent times, is that they actually classify certain imported food as luxury. Y'all ever heard about this? Y'all heard about this in the budget? Luxury items. So do you know that Good afternoon, Jocelyn. Nice to have you here, right? Hi, Alyssa and Danny. Good. So what they do, they impose high taxes on certain imported food that competes with the food that we are producing. So, right, the government made apples and grapes luxury that's okay that's okay jesse you can always go back it's a video that you can pull back you know so you don't have to be on time it's not official class but i do i do understand you know you wanted to be here from the start so you could just go back to the start of the video so apples and grapes because the government wanted to encourage us to eat more local so you know y'all um you know, some of you are a bit bougie, right? Some of you will bypass the local products, your bananas, your mangoes, and your palm city or, or um, those types of fruits, and you want to go for apples and grapes. So if they put taxes on it, it means that apples and grapes become more expensive to buy. And of course, that will lower the competition. And therefore, um, it will help you know the local distributors to get their goods sold so that is government involvement in the food processing industry right so the other thing is financing the training of skilled workers um and also um helping with educating educating people so you would see you would see the government always puts out um training programs right especially in certain areas through community development or export tt so that of course people in the food industry they become skilled and they become knowledgeable in their in their work right of course to pre prevent um food loss and contamination of food and all of these things right and of course financing research into better developing better methods of producing and processing the local products here yeah. so you know when you're producing um especially when you're dealing with food preservation is very important um you know you can't just sell anything you put it on the shelf and of course certain items will spoil very quickly that is why they have preservation so research into how certain things can stay longer right um, and, and especially if you're exporting certain food products you have to have a good um, preservation and of course if it's meat and these things refrigerated and how it's treated before it is sold everybody understand that in terms of government involvement in the food processing industry so where is Singapore, right? So one of the nice things is that I was actually really, really lucky to visit Singapore in 2019 before the lockdown and COVID-19 and lack of traveling and so forth. And I don't know if y'all ever heard about the, the Jewel, Changa, Changi Jewel Airport in Singapore. Y'all should Google it youtube it it's amazing right so singapore has been on my bucket list i love to travel for a very long long time and it is a dense 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 little island so it is smaller than trinidad and tobago and where is singapore located it is in southeast asia so southeast asia that's where it is located and it's a very tiny island right below malaysia right so i visited both malaysia and singapore i actually went for a leadership conference and i decided to 
to up over to Sing Singapore. The conference is in Malaysia. And it is so beautiful. High technology, a lot of high-rise buildings. So imagine this tiny island with a population, a tiny island smaller than Trinidad, with a population of 5 million, right? It is densely populated. That is the flag of Singapore. And let us go through where Singapore is. So it is an island located at the tip of the Malaysian Peninsula in the heart of Southeast Asia. So the total land area is 692 square kilometers. Remember I said that Trinidad and Tobago is almost 5,000 square kilometers. So imagine that Singapore is this, how many times Singapore would be able to fit, you know, um, into Trinidad because it's so tiny, right? But they have approximately 5 million people. In terms of GDP, right, Singapore was a third world country and they had reform where they held all their leaders accountable for corruption, right? So they started penalizing those in governments that was corrupting the country. And this led to a massive turnaround and they are like one of the most developed countries in the world. So they have a high GDP because of this, they have less corruption. Remember Trinidad, um, GDP was around what? We said like 14, 15,000 US and they are approximately 28,000 US. So they, their GDP is higher, right? The amount of money they're making in the country is higher. In terms of the food processing industry, comparing that to Trinidad, right? It also contributes to the same, Trinidad is three, Sing, Singapore is just 3.5, right? And they also have what we call small and medium-sized enterprises. And which makes up 95% of the businesses in terms of food processing industry in Singapore, right? And then you have very large enterprises, which would be like your multinational um, corporations. But of course, they are just in that 5%, right? In terms of labor force, right, for the SMEs in terms of small, medium, enterprises they range from few workers to about 200 workers that is because they utilize a lot of technology so they don't employ as much laborers as trinidad and tobago in terms of products that they manufacture they produce some of the same things in terms of dairy beverages beer bakery products meats chocolates edible right oils so in terms of location, Singapore has over 600 food processing companies, right? Um, remember in Trinidad, we have a bit less, right? In terms of raw materials, all, all or most of Singapore's raw material is actually imported, right? So they do not utilize um, raw materials in their country, right? They basically import all of their raw material and it is processed in Singapore, right? In terms of employment, in terms of labor supply, they actually employ 19,000 workers. So imagine Trinidad employing 15,000 with a population of 1.3 and Singapore employing 19,000 with a population of 5 million. You all get that logic? It means that the food processing industry in Singapore employs very, very little percentage of, of employment. It contributes a very, very, very little amount to the employment industry because it is heavily, um, in terms of technology, it's heavily 
industrialized in terms of a country, right? It's one of those, what we call newly industrializing country. And they have a lot of high technology. So if you have high technology, it means that it is mechanized and you let, you need less laborers because most of the, the, the work can be done or performed by machinery. Everybody get that? In terms of accessibility, in terms of transportation, they have, of course, complex road networks in um, Singapore, from the industrial areas, of course, to the airport and to the seaport. And it's very efficient in terms of the distribution of goods, both locally and to overseas markets, right? In terms of technology, you would see here that the technology used in the food processing industry is keeping with the global trends, meaning they are up to the time right they are not back with technology they are one of the forerunners in terms of technology high technology and they have a very skilled and well-educated labor force which means they are continually um, improving on their industry so the government in terms of the government involvement because remember i told you all singapore is a very tiny tiny space or a tiny island right you would notice that they have what we what we just spoke about, just like Trinidad, they have industrial parks, but they have industrial zone that is established for the industries in Singapore because the, the land is scarce, right? And that is basically the land that they use for, for their industrial areas, right? In terms of the food processing industry, right? In terms of branding, they, 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 they brand their products locally, right? And they try to export it, of course, to other markets. So they support the local food producers by branding the products and then exporting it. Just like Trinidad, how you would have, of course, like Bertie's pepper sauce branded. And everybody know that the scorpion pepper comes from Trinidad and it is utilizing certain products the same way they brand their local food produce. And in terms of duty-free entry, right, Singapore has a free port. So free port meaning you have access for duty-free entry of products into the country, right? So that is basically the... Um, the, the 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 case study between in terms of secondary industry that is what you really have to know for the both industries for singapore and trinidad so in your exam what is really coming is industries in the caribbean so they can take questions also from the secondary industry and focus on trinidad alone i I am not too sure if tourism would come because tourism is more service, but I am hoping that if it comes, you all would know how to answer those questions. So let us just glance at the questions that I have. If you all want this, the list of questions on the broad topics, shoot me an email and I will send it to you. I think I just put, post my email and i will send it to you so let's go through the questions can you all see the questions Are you all able to see the questions? So on the rocks, right? They can give you, they can ask you what are rocks? Identify the three types of rocks. Name one rock type and explain its properties, 
right? Complete the rock, the table of rock formation, rock type and examples. Explain the formation of any one type of rock. What is the rock cycle? Explain it using example. So what are the three types of rocks? What are the three types of rocks? What are the three types of rocks that you have? Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Hi, Tayanda. Very nice to see you. Which part of the country you're from? Let me know. I'd just like to have an idea. So, um, what is a rock, though? So, we know the three types. What is a rock? Very good, Jassy. Take your good as well. What is a rock? How would you define what a rock is? San Fernando in the house. Nice. What is a rock? What would you say is a rock? So there's a nice um YouTube video on the rock, on the on rocks and the rock cycle. I can share it with you all for you all to to Go through what is what is a rock? Anybody have an idea what is a rock? So you, you know the three types, but you don't know how to define a rock, right? So this is the rock type there. So if you go to this YouTube video, it will really help you understand the rock cycle better, right? What you need to know in terms of rocks right so rock what is a rock a rock is a naturally occurring right solid um aggregate that consists of minerals right and and other ag aggregates sometimes also fossils right so it is a solid mass or naturally um occurring solid mass of minerals and and minerals and other fossils cemented together so that is what is a rock right organic material as well like fossils right so solid sediment it consists of minerals remember that minerals and you can also have fossils right so in terms of the rock cycle, why do you think it's called the rock cycle? It is anything that is a cycle means that it, it continues, right? So 
you start from what volcan volcanic eruptions that can give off you will have magma inside that eventually reaches the surface as lava so you can also have intrusive volcanic rocks and extrusive volcanic rocks and then what happens to this in terms of the rock cycle what happens this volcanic rock what happens to this volcanic rock right the extrusive volcanic rocks and also intrusive can be exposed right to the surface if you have like a volcanic plug right when it's exposed to the surface what happens to this rock you have what happening right it cools but in terms of breaking down the rock right you have weathering and this weathering can lead to um the compaction of the rock right it's become cemented or compacted when it's weathered and broken down into pieces yeah right so you have the weathering that leads to regolith and when this becomes cemented or compacted like when it falls when you have organic material collecting at the bottom of the sea floor you can have of course that being compacted right compacted cemented and it creates what we call sedimentary rock from sedimentary rock sedimentary rock what happens to the sedimentary rocks now very good nasania by weathering forming sediments good what happens to the What happens to the sedimentary rock? What are the processes involved that changes that processive that sedimentary rock into a new state? Yes, Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Heat and pressure, right? So remember, sedimentary rock is compacted, and sometimes you have, of course, overburden other rocks, you have trees. All of that leads to pressure and heat deep within the earth, right? Changes this. And metamorphic comes from the word metamorphose. So the sedimentary rock is then changed right through metamorphosis. Very good, Kimberly. Into, um, by heat and pressure, into metamorphic. Y'all are, you all are good. Y'all understand this well. Excellent. So that is the rock cycle. And then, of course, the process can, can change, right? The metamorphic rock can then break down again. And, of course, change into a sedimentary rock. And then you have the cycle continuing. So go through the, the link of the video, right? And then you need to have, you need to know um, at least two rock types. I would say three rock types for each each um category so sedimentary rock examples of sedimentary rocks examples of igneous rock examples of metamorphic rock do you all know the examples list some for me in the chat So some of the met some two igneous rocks, igneous rocks. You can have granite. You'll know in terms of rock types. So I sedimentary limestone, very good. Everybody know limestone. What about sandstone? Igneous, you can have basalt, you can have granite. Very good, Kimberly. Sedimentary shale and sandstone do you all know what shale is turned into shale is turned into what metamorphic rock obsidian igneous very good to hear. shale is turned into slate when metamorphose right that becomes slate and granite become nice 
quartz become quartz sides. You all understand? So it's always good to link what the original rock is and when it has changed into the the state, right? It can be no tikia granite is an igneous rock. Right, and then it's changed into yes, very good. So remember marble and slate. Remember the changed state of the rock. You can remember the original. So, like how I say shale, it's turned into slate when metamorphosed, quartz into quartzite, right? Granite into nice, um, granite into graphite. Remember what is the changed state of the rock as well. Very good. Let us look at the weathering questions. Are you all able to see the weathering questions up on the screen? For some reason, it's not showing up. Let me try and share it again. So weathering, so 2014, 2015, 2016, 2018. So two ways in which water contributes to weathering. If they ask you this question, two ways in which water contributes to weathering, three ways in which water contributes to weathering, explain two ways, sorry, in which water contributes to the weathering of rocks they are speaking, speaking or referring to what two processes? What two processes are they referring to here? What two processes are they referring to? You're seeing the question? very good very good nice so you can use i love that um carbonation and hydrolysis hydrolysis is where water right is involved and reacts with the chemicals sorry not chemicals the minerals in the rock right and carbonation is a process by where rain falls through the atmosphere um collects carbon dioxide causes it to become a weak carbonic acid and when it falls on limestone rock right it reacts with limestone dissolves the rock right and it changes it into a bicarbonate so the weak carbonic acid reacts with the calcium carbonate limestone and create a weak carbonic acid hydrolysis frost action right um hydrolysis is very straightforward is where you have minerals in a rock, right? <clears throat> minerals in a rock. And when you have water, right, falling on that rock, let us say, um, to rainfall or whatever, um, sometimes the, the H2O, right, the minerals in the water reacts with that minerals in the rock and changes it changes the state. You all get that? So it is really where water changes the, the minerals or reacts with the the minerals in that um in that rock kimberly oxy oxy oxidation is not on the 
is not on the um, syllabus. Oxidation is not on the syllabus, but oxidation is basically um, rusting, right? So it is where, of course, the, 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 the rock itself is exposed to the elements of weather, right? Um, and you would see that it changes into this reddish color. I can't remember, Kimberly, if you remember when I took you all in school at the back and you were looking at the rocks and you were seeing how the rocks were looking red, right? That is what oxidation is, is when it's exposed to the elements of the weather, right? That it, it's like rusting when you have a piece of iron and that is exposed. But that is not on the syllabus, right? Hi, Calicia. Dre. Very good, Dre. I know you're studying hard for English Day tomorrow. So let me wrap up here. So in terms of the questions for weathering, let us just look at what some of them are. So you know the process of frost shattering. Water, in this case with frost shattering, takes place um, through your... It takes place where water freezes into. So you have day and you have night, right? Where, of course, water collects into the cracks, crevices, fissures in the rocks, right? And yes, where the iron oxides in the rock are exposed to air and moisture. Very good, Jassy. Yeah? So with cross action, right? You have cracks, crevices, fissures in the rocks, and you have, of course, in the day, water collecting in the rocks, temperatures fall. Of course, this is in countries that have polar climates, right? Temperatures fall, and what happens? The water freezes. Water freezes by, freezes, and when it freezes, it expands by how much percent? How much percent does water freeze? Dre, I haven't been able to check out Stream, Streamlabs because I've been super busy and that is a headache by itself after figure out. So when this week go, when we finish this week here and I have time between this week after, between the paper ones, when I start to do paper one session, I will try to get Streamlabs up for that, right? No, 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 no. Ice expands to... How much percent? No, no, Tiana. Nine percent. Nine percent. So when that expands, it exerts pressure on the outside rock, right? On the surrounding rock. And of course, that continual freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing eventually leads to shattering. So if you fill water and you in a plastic bottle and you put it in the freezer, you will notice that it becomes ex. Sorted. Yes, I was talking. Oh, Tiana, you misunderstood what I said. Yes, in terms of the percentage. Good. So the next question there, right, um, is explain how the rock structure and chemical composition influence weathering of limestone. Six marks, and that was 2016. Dre, you should be able to explain this really good, right? Carbonation. This is, you all know that this is, um, this particular question is carbonation, but they want you to look at the structure of limestone, which means that you have to know the physical structure of limestone. Let's go through that quickly. What is the physical structure of limestone? Yes, Dre, the, it is the freezing and touring. So the freezing will cause the expansion and then it melts again. So that's the process, freezing and touring that leads to the eventual breakup of the rock. Let us look at limestone. What is the rock structure for limestone and chemical composition? 
two things. The chemical composition, you all should know that by now. Limestone is what? Very good, Nassania. It contains bed and planes, joints, cracks, and fissures. So joints are vertical. Bed and planes are horizontal. Remember that, right? So joints are the vertical lines and the bed and planes are the horizontal layers of the, the limestone in the limestone rock, right? So that is the rock structure. The joints, cracks, fissures, bed and planes are lines of weaknesses that make it very susceptible to the weathering process, right? Because it can dissolve the limestone when, of course, the weak carbonic acid gets in these cracks, crevices, fissures, joints. And limestone, Chemical composition is calcium carbonate. Very good. Very good. Dre, Tekia, Nasania, excellent, which is CaCO3. So that also explains that, of course, limestone can be easily dissolved when it reacts, when the when it reacts with a weak carbonic acid. So that is how you would explain that question. You all understand that? And then it talks about denudation, weathering, mass movement, erosion. You should know that. Weathering and mass wasting. The role of temperature change and frost action. So, right? Kimberly, check that equation. You have to balance it out, right? Remember that. So I'm not too sure if you all have the textbook, have the entire equation written out that you can um, learn off. Right? Temperature change and frost action. Temperature change has to do with exfoliation. You all ever heard of exfoliation? You all know what is exfoliation? Or oh, what is then? Denudation, denudation, den Takia, Nasania, you want to help or drink? You all did class with me Saturday, so you're all supposed to know this. What is denudation? That is something that you have to know. Very good, Kimberly. So balance it out so that it becomes the bicarbonate. Thank you. Very good. Um, denudation. Dre, you there? Nasania, you there? That's in terms of exfoliation. But we talk, um, somebody asked about what is denudation. Takia asked me about denudation. So I want the Sanya or Andre or somebody that was here to explain for me. Not quite, Michaela. So what it is, the new nation, is the, it is the combination, very good, Calicia. It is all of the processes combined. So it is weathering, erosion, mass wasting that leaves the lie lying bare or strips away the land. Everybody understand that? So it is the lowering, right, very good, Jassy. Jassy has an excellent definition there, right? It is the lowering or the exposure of the land, right, lying bare on the earth's surface due to the processes of erosion, weathering, and mass movement or mass wasting working all together at one. Thank you, all of you all. Give yourself a round of applause. Everybody came in and pitched in, and we have an 
excellent um, definition. That's a good week, right? So it's all of the process working together and it la lay it lays the, the, the rock is now or the layers of the earth is now exposed, right? So it is the lowering or the reducing of the land. I hope that is clear now. Takiya, that is clear for you. So we know what is weathering, right? Weathering is the break up or this integration of rock, right? Also, I like to add the 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 change in rock. So it is not just physical breakup or disintegration, but the alteration or change in the chemical composition of the rock, right? By by, of course elements of weather whereas you have um erosion is where you have the agents of erosion wind water ice gravity etc um moving right um the material that is that was weathered right or it carries it remember weathering is in situ in situ very good Dre. look how all this cool in me i love it i love it right in situ right so it is the physical disintegration or chemical change right chemical change in the rock in situ it doesn't move whereas erosion right is the agents of erosion that um takes or carries the rock mass movement is what what is mass movement? So mass movement, and we have two questions that they love to bring on mass movements, and we did those already. Well, I did them in my Saturday class. Mass movement. Mass movement or mass wasting it's practically the same thing, right? It's the movement of rock under the influence of gravity. It can be a slow movement or a fast movement. What is the slow movement? The slow movement is very good, Michaela. The movement of weathered materials down slope by gravity under the influence of gravity. Very good. Excellent. You all on top of things. I love it. I love it. I feel like you're going to all get great ones. Eh? Very good. So you have soil creep and then you have frost, soil creep and landslide. Soil creep is a very slow, slow movement, whereas mass with landslide, sorry, is a fast movement. So soil creep slow, landslide very fast. Excellent right so i will stop there y'all you see these topics on soil you see these questions on soil i need you all to learn to go and research these take a picture of this you are seeing it 2013 2016 this is our soil in terms of soil formation very good, Jassy. Very good. You're seeing the screen here. Very good, Tianda. Yes, the weathered material that is collected at the base of the slope or that is weathered, we call it regolith. Very good, regolith right um soil formations i will also put some links for you all for soil formation um they love to ask basically soil creep or the role of climate in the production of soil how climate produce lattice soils but i think that is under climate vegetation and soil i don't think that will come but just till you know so that we covered we would um still do it y'all can see the questions take a picture of the questions and soil 
And let me send you all the, 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 the video links for, for soil formation. So next class, we will go through the, the, um, so tell me what is soil creep and landslide so we can just start from soils next day. Y'all doing well. And then Tuesday, we can do some map work, uh, some map work questions. Yes, lattice soils is the only soil types um, on the syllabus, but I don't think, you know, I'm not too sure, you know, CXC, you could never tell. So that is why we should learn it. Um, the simple soil profile, which is lattice soil. Uh, let me find it. Oh. You are like supposed to have class with upper six now, eh? Keep, keep unit two. Their exam is tomorrow. They are going to get around both. My unit two students are well coursing on me. Sure. Um, Jassy, you have my email. I posted my email in the chat. Anybody who wants the email no 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 Renzi no, not coming at all that off the syllabus only latter soil so don't go and don't go and hot up your head over things that not no longer in the syllabus just latter soils a slow downward movement under the influence of gravity yes very very slow right very good one centimeter excellent excellent guys and landslide That is his link for soil formation. Jassy, you have my email. You all saw the email, right? It's somewhere to the top of the chat, Jassy. To email me if you want this, the list of the, the all of the questions, the compilation. And that is what we have from the previous years. All of the questions from the previous years that they bring under the broad topics. Once you do those, you all should be very well prepared for the exam. Right, so that is the end of it. End of it, landslide. Let's just do landslide so that we will pick up from soil formation next class. Um I wonder if tourism coming, you know. I, I will I will pray to Jesus and see what he says tonight. You all see the islands of the Caribbean, what it comes like? They like to give you something like this. Right? Those industry questions is the thing that train me. I feel like they can bring tourism to, you know. You all want me to do a quick thing on tourism? Very good, Kimberly. A sudden movement of soil or rock down so under the to the influence of gravity. Do you all want me to do a quick revision on tourism? Because that's the last thing we have to do under industries. Which game? The Caribbean game? The Caribbean game, Dre? Is it the Caribbean game you're talking about? Yes, it works. All right, so Kimberly, I don't understand Kimberly, no. Kimberly, Kimberly going to my school. Kimberly, <laughs> I will go over tourism, right? Um, we'll do about, we'll do tourism quick tomorrow, and then we'll do some past papers again, right? So you all. This exam, Jassy, you don't trust CXE? Hmm. I don't trust CXE either. CXE different, yes? Um, so you see all this hard work you all have me doing on the week of my birthday. My birthday is actually day of your exams. 
the 8th of July, the day of your exam is the day that I have, is the day of my birthday. So all this hard work, I pray that you all will really study hard and all do very well in geography. That would be a very nice birthday gift for me. And I want you all to email me or message me and tell me, Miss, I did very well. It will make my, it will make my birthday. No, Kimberly, I was saying that you want me to go over tourism, everything in the Google Classroom, you know, but I'll do it over. Thanks, Tianda. Yes. You see, I try, I try to flatter my here and saying I look a little nice. Wes, I'm going to start the Cape, the Cape session, like now, as soon as I come off of here, and I will send it. Wes, do you have my do you have my email? Send me an email and I will send it to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. So Wes, just send me an email and I will send it out to you all. If you want the reviews. Kimberly. <laughs> all right. So let's wrap up. All the best in paper one, your paper, English paper one and paper two tomorrow. I wish you all, all the best. Mash it up. Right. And we commence tomorrow. Please, God, remember to share the videos with your friend. Like the videos and also subscribe to the channel. I am seeing that only 50% of the viewers are subscribed. So you all need to subscribe. All right. Thanks for everyone who made the class. Thank you for all the blessings. Takia, thank you. Right. So later, have a good evening. Study hard. I just send it L Fuchong SFGC at gmail.com that is it if i am on instagram yes jassy instagram i have um coexistence expeditions not um nothing for school of geography just my my small business coexistence expedition <laughs> look what dre asked me <laughs> dre I tell her, I'm, I'm a geographer whisperer. You ask me about English. Um, people tend to do very well in our school, St. Francois, that I teach at St. Francis girls. A lot of them do very well. They get a lot of grade ones in English. So I don't think I'll have to beat up too much. You all should do well. Just study hard. And I can tell you all will study hard because you all are here very late on this slide. All right, so let me come off because I need to start a live with Cape Unit 2 or you all can jump off and let me start Unit 2. Cape, their exam is tomorrow. So you all can fall off when you're ready. Let me see if I can restart the live. Okay, bye guys.